What is up YouTube and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included Season 3. And yes, we have all three of the shoots working now. So all of the goodies from the bottom of the base, sorry, the bottom of the map, are being collected automatically, stored into this chamber when they are cooled down to a sufficient level of 30 degrees or less they are then sent to the base more importantly though and before we continue please don't forget to subscribe for all future episodes and games and even bigger news on that i am actually going to do a competition uh, just to try and help the channel but also just to thank you guys for watching and taking the time the competition is simple. At some point throughout this video, there will be a word populated on the screen. It will be obvious. Don't panic. Put that word into the comments. Comment, like, and comment the word, and you'll be entered. I'm only going to do it for a week or so. The winner will receive a copy of this game, or if you wish, I can give you... Uh, you'll get, you can have a voucher of the same value not a problem and that is the value of the game at max so it's like twenty dollars not the currently the game is six uh about six or seven dollars on on discount but yeah full price of the game is the is the price or a voucher if you wish to buy any game of your choosing all you have to do is enter the magic word that will pop up at some point in this video and it will be very obvious in the comments and like the video as well thank you very much and let's get on with the video itself so we can clearly see the temperature differential here. The, the goods are coming in from that very red orange area. They go into this room, which is very, very blue, showing that it's much cooler. The, the temperature change is slow. If anybody's got any tips on how to speed that up, please do let me know. That's one thing about this game that I've never understood and struggled with is that if I put something that's a thousand degrees into a water, it should basically immediately throw out loads of steam and cool down pretty much instantly, but it, it doesn't seem to work. Uh, in this game. Remember, physics in real world and physics in games aren't that well balanced, right? But it's fine. So three different waves of goods coming in now. Three different shoots to make sure they're not restricted. Six sweepers in total. Four conveyor belt loaders that are all chock-a-block. I'm just throwing in a mesh tile here for any of the liquefiables that are being picked up. They are being picked up by the main collectors and they are being put in this chamber they are not going to get sent into the base though so if they decide to melt while they are in one of them three positions uh, the liquid will just fall straight through i'm also hoping that the fact that they're there and that there is temp shift plates that they'll also help cool things down a bit quicker but again, I'm not entirely sure that's correct or how it works. And that coil thing that I just tried, I do try that. It doesn't work. It's not for this, so don't waste your time with that. We can skip past that. If anything, it actually slows down the flow of water. It doesn't make any difference to the temperature change. Uh, but for me, it was just it was only about five, ten minutes wasted, so not the end of the world. The turtle gas overlay is looking nice for me. The base is full and blue. The... Obviously, the grey there is the farms. The other rooms are coloured accordingly to as they should be. The outside is very shaded, very faded, which is showing that it's... Although it is showing gases, still carbon dioxide at the bottom, hydrogen and then oxygen and polluted oxygen in between, they are very low in terms of grams. They won't be down to the micrograms yet, I don't think, but they will certainly be down to the grams. Remember, though, that there are still a lot of holes to dig, rooms to blow out, uh, there's a lot of bleach stone, polluted waters, etc. off gas in. So I'm not expected to get it to a vacuum. And I think I have mentioned previously that I don't want to technically get it to a vacuum. Though if I do, it would be brilliant. But it's not the aim. Um, it's just to try and collect the resources, actually. Because they are, quote-unquote, resources. So that's what we need to use them for. So this is mentioned actually in a previous episode, but the conclusion is the same. Effectively, what I'm going to do here is take all of the polluted oxygen that I have stored, which is quite a lot, uh, push it into a room that is contained. In that room will be enough of the gas filters, filters, I'm not sure if that's the word, the, the cleaners. 
to cover the width of the room. And then of course pumps in there that will pump constantly out the clean oxygen and dirty oxygen, polluted oxygen, will just go back into the room. The idea then is you can see I've got four tanks full of polluted oxygen. We're going to turn all of that into clean oxygen and use it in the base or in the atmosphere suits. Simple as that, really. It does require a bit of finessing and building, of course, but it shouldn't be too difficult to work out. And there you go, that is the setup. Now, I have put a gas tile underneath the filters, only because they do actually filter below themselves as well, for those of you that didn't know that. So it's worth making sure they have full ability to, sorry, full efficiency uh, in terms of turning the polluted oxygen into clean oxygen and then allowing that to be transported out of the room and used for whatever we need it for. Okay, more exciting now. Finally, I am breaking the service, breaching the service as it's called in the game. Uh, we are, this is the coolant area that we had from the very beginning and obviously we saw that it was near the surface and I'm going to dig out from here and create some sort of platform it is a bit messy at the minute we'll have to dig all, all out climb up high make sure everything's gone because we've had plenty of meteor showers normally in the normal game as well remember you don't get meteor showers on your first asteroid but clearly on the lab you do so all of that will need digging out, flattening out, and giving us some sort of platform. I can then look at getting a satellite up there, some power. Maybe, oh, well, yes, no, I need the transport tube, a transport tube loader, just so that the duplicates can get here instantly without having to run here. The meteors look terrifying. I'm sure they're not that aggressive on, um... Yeah, that's brutal. We'll see. See how much damage they do when we actually get some buildings up there. But yeah, so we need power. We need the... We're going to need a, a transformer, I assume, as well. Because we're going to be using a lot of power up here. A rocket platform, of course. Uh, and then some way of getting the fuel up here. The petroleum for the rockets. I don't want to leave the petroleum in the pipe, though. On the surface to cool down. So I will use the meter, the liquid meter. Basically, it will allow us to say how much liquid we want to send to the rocket, and that's it. And then it will stop. Uh, I believe the the engine for the petroleum, small petroleum rocket, holds 450 kilos, so 450 liters of fuel. So we'll just set it at that, and then it won't be the pipes will remain empty. Also draining the water on this right hand side that I mentioned. We're cleaning up all of the solids, so I thought I'd clean up the water as well. We are getting very close now to actually having some sort of uh, norm normality, yes. Um, so the bottom will be cleared out. All of the rubbish bits and bobs, resources will be picked up. All of the liquids will be picked up and filtered out. We can then move over to this right hand side. Uh, and go from there. Again, I really need to actually figure out how far to the right it goes. Hopefully not much more. Because there's only so much digging I can do. And I have to skip a lot of it because it takes so sodding long. I did try the miners, but they wasn't that good, to be honest. I can't see an edge there. But it could be one tile off the dark there. It could be 200, who knows. We'll see. In the meantime, they're still building up top here, of course. Not forgot about that. They've got to build the scaffolding to get up high to all of these uh, bits of ground they need to dig out. Obviously, that left-hand side, they've finished. That's fine. Some of it's falling down because it's like regolith, which is a new resource we've now found. And then a cycle later, we've actually managed to get almost everything done. So, we have the rocket platform over there to the right. The satellite on the far left, though it's not been finished yet. There is a transporter tube station as well. I did that first to try and speed up the whole uh, everybody getting here, of course. Uh, and then the floor is just a metal floor that's made out of tungsten because I have a lot of that. Tungsten and iron, but I'm trying not to use the iron because that's what we need for steel. So I'm using the tungsten as my refined metal of choice unless it's something electrical, which is copper, or decor, which is gold. Now, there is the issue of radiation as well. 
while I look at the petroleum engine just to figure out what it is, does, and how many towers it gives us. The answer to that is 20. Um, and this rocket is going to be a petroleum engine, it's going to have a battery, a solar panel, four or five critter transport pods, and one of the... I can't remember what it's called now, but the capsule that lets you have up to 10 duplicates in it, the massive one, the biggest one. They're not going far for the second asteroid, right? I'm going to try and get some people over there and get all of them plug slugs back. Because more power, after all. We need more power. And free power from plug slugs is good. Now, they do eat ore. So, I need to establish the realistic value. Though, as we go into space, I'm going to be bringing ore in from various different comets and all sorts. I've never actually got to the drill core to go and do proper mining, so that's really exciting as well. But again, you tell me. You guys watching these episodes dictates when I record them and how I do them. Uh, some get quite a few views, some get hardly any. Hopefully the comments so far have all been positive, so if there's something I'm doing wrong, you need to let me know. Anyway. So cleaning out the gas pipes for cooling now, because as I've said previously, cooling with gas, although it works, is very inefficient and very poor. And the Dreco farms have always been an issue in terms of temperature since the start. So instead, I am going to wire them in to the proper grid, which is the liquid cooling grid, and go from there. Rocket engine is set. We're still waiting for something to actually come up and fix it. You can see I've capped off that, so we're not losing any gases. Though, to be fair, that's only a self-concealed chamber anyway. But chucking away gas into the atmosphere, that is the worst thing you could say into a non-atmosphere of space the vacuum of space is just a waste now all of that off gassing you can see happening is obviously being instantly deleted because it isn't a vacuum and that is polluted oxygen as well because there's so much slime up there the right hand side ladder i will rip out i only want one way up there uh, and then i'll put a door on it as well to make sure it's fully sealed need to just figure out how I'm doing the fuels. There needs to be a power line getting to the rocket. We need ladders going all the way up the height of the rocket so that we can get to it. Uh, and gas pipes to put oxygen in the rocket. Uh, as well as take carbon dioxide out of the rocket when it relands, etc, etc. Still a few logistics to sort out. Both cables for power to the rocket, the gas pipes, the liquid pipes for the water and stuff that's going to go into the rocket as well as the fuel uh, the engine is now finished so there we go the first engine of the season and we've gone straight in with a petroleum engine which isn't the one you normally start with i think you, most people start with sucrose is it or steam but it works and actually i think the most obvious is uh, the carbon dioxide rocket right so Crows is difficult unless you do the Swedels, and that's where I, I normally do the Swedels and get a crap ton of it. So that's what I've done in the past, but differences is different, does. Uh, hopefully, you noticed the word, it has happened, so you might want to scroll back if you missed it. But that's for the competition, so good luck to you, and thank you for watching. I appreciate it muchly. That's a bit of extra protection because I've made a big gaping hole out into space. I'm using lead now, which we have so much of. It's a um, quarter of a million ton of refined metal, which is lead. And that is the best thing to use for radiation protection. So I'm going to put a layer of that along here to try and mitigate or reduce the amount of radiation bursting into our base through the gaping hole that we made. Now you can see that is a 20 tall rocket and I need to get the ladders up there. But previously you'll find that the heat does cause a lot of damage. So I'm going to make the ladders out of either ceramic or steel, which will be able to tolerate the heats without any issues. It is in a vacuum, so the gases that are released should not cause any problems. They will dissipate in seconds, as long as nobody stood underneath it, of course. That would, wouldn't end very well, but... You also find that a lot of the time the gases actually go through the floor and into your chamber underneath, which will be annoying, and it may or may not melt the lead. 
we will see. If it does, I will readjust. It's not a problem. That right-hand side of that chamber is not technically going to be used anyway. It was already there for the cooling loop that we've had for quite a few episodes now. Over on Asteroid 2, things have been coming along. They've been digging the holes. They have finally got the trees planted as well. Though, of course, we need polluted water for those. Quite a lot of trees. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because there was a lot of seeds I got from the right-hand side of the map that you'll see hopefully if I zoom out in a bit. But the power situation, the plug slugs are just not giving me enough to keep the pumps and stuff running. So I've chucked in a couple of generators there that are basically burning wood for, for, for power. And seeing as the trees were free, I thought, why not? I could have sent them home and grew them at home, but lumber and the trees aren't really something I'm interested in growing unless there is a morph someone wants to see or there is a morph that I want to see in the future. The base, as I said, has been converted into mesh, so any digging above the base... This is where the seeds came from, by the way, this chamber here. The one below where that water is, and then a little bit before, but obviously that's all been dug out now. I found the water chamber with that pump in as well, which is useful. But yeah, so as we dig up all of this liquid you see here, we'll just go straight through the base and into the bottom basin to be pumped up as normal without causing any problems to my base. You can use them as base walls, remember, as also the air ones and the bunkers and the tiles for the metal tiles all of them are optional for building with mostly though i use the tiles because your sedimentary rocks and things like that you normally have millions of by this point in the, in the game i think i have two and a half million sedimentary rock give or take Do well, well, doing well though over here there is what is that two four five i think five plug slugs going at it they are being fed ore which is cobalt ore of course that's all we've got over here this got left because i set up to do this and then forgot it seems uh, we are now at four and a third in terms of backup so i do need to get this finished asap just off subject though, the cuddle pip did hatch and there he is in the ranch. Pretty in pink and you can see it's given off a decor value. So you've got the green and yellowish one that is the standard pip. The light pink and dark pink one that is the cuddle pip. Again, please do comment and let me know if you're still watching at this stage. Let me know what you want to see in terms of morphs. If you're not sure what the options are, I have no problem uh, before the next episode just running through the mod. There's basically pictures, and you can see if you want to pick colours or whatever you like. Okay, so this is fun. I am now plumbing in from pretty much the bottom of the map where we're making the petroleum all the way up to the chamber below the rocket launch there. So a pipe that allows us to get that petroleum all the way up and into a rocket because having the fuel at the bottom of the base and the rocket at the top of the base isn't going to work unless you put the two together. So it's not too difficult without the mod to give me the long bridges to skip to i'd be screwed though uh, there is actually a mod that i might switch out for especially going into later game where it allows you to do you could jump one and two already but it does a three four and a five as well so far i've managed with the one and the two so it's okay you can see the drain in there three pumps into three levels of storage for the petroleum then into three singular tanks that are be wallpapered yellow to show it's petroleum just i don't know why i did that if i'm honest but there we are uh, the rocket there you can see has got a battery on there and a solar panel so far i don't know if i decided at this point what i was doing just wanted to have a look through all of the options and see what i wanted to make the rocket is likely going to the second asteroid and likely it means it is so i will need to send some refined metals over which teleporting is easy so i can do that send them over to allow them to build a rocket platform to land on because of course you, you can't land without a rocket platform so we can do that the other planets asteroids that we go to of course we'll have to do the long way using the rovers and the trebuchet yeah i can't remember what they're called but there's a proper um, cargo bay that you can use to drop resources off and then get the rovers to build it. 
Lots of rovers is usually a plan that I like to do first. One astronaut to fly them over and then you drop off loads of rovers, maybe even send two rockets and let the rovers do the basics that is ripping up the ground. Now I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be able to send the bio bots or not. I can't figure out how and on the wiki it doesn't seem to say either. If anybody knows how to do it, please do let me know. I've seen somebody comment about them trapping them in the shuttle and then launching it. But there was no comments after that comment to say if it actually worked or not. So it would be great if somebody does know that. However, we are at the stage now where we're getting to the end of the episode. So I am going to end it here. The next episode will be the completion of the rocket and all of the things and infrastructure that needs to go with it. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, please click like. Don't forget the competition. And if you're still here now, once again, thank you very much. Take care. Goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.